Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to make our fall for granny pumpkin pattern. I'll be showing you how to make the medium sized pumpkin in this tutorial, but our pattern does include a small and also a large pumpkin. I've done something a little different with these pumpkins from pumpkins I've done in the past. So I've added a rice bag for filling, making them nice and weighted so they would even make a nice doorstop. But I really love the weighted feel to these pumpkins. Gives a little bit of a different spin. Now, if you want to use the bags and fill them with polyester fill, that will work fine as well. Because this pattern is going to have a little bit more open stitch, it is important to have the bag so that no stuffing comes out of your pumpkin. So I've just used some rice and these bags I purchased from Amazon and I'll have the link in the description box. So you'll need three sizes if you're making all the sizes of the pumpkins. So we have a six by 7.9 inch, an eight by 10 and a 10 by 12 inch bag. The yarn that we're using for this pattern is Mary Maxim Starlet Worsted Weight. And for these little guys, I have used five colors but you can use as many colors as you want or even crochet the pumpkin in a solid color. And I have some of them shown in one color as well. So the colors that I'm going to be using in this tutorial, I'm gonna be doing the pumpkin like this one here. So I'm using deep green, chocolate, medium taupe, soft taupe, and natural for this tutorial. I also use some cinnamon sticks for the stems and just some twine to decorate and a five millimeter crochet hook. And this hook is also from Mary Maxim. So I'll have the link for all the supplies and details in the description box below. So we're going to begin with a magic ring. Wrap the yarn around your index finger three times. Take your hook, sliding it through pull that through and we're going to chain two. Now we're going to work 10 double crochet in the ring. Now I do want to mention that our smaller size actually begins with more stitches than this pumpkin, but I have made a note in the pattern. I know this can sometimes be confusing, but we, we are not increasing as much with the smaller pumpkin. And the idea is to get to the number of stitches for the clusters that we need. So our small pumpkin will start with 12 and our large pumpkin is going to start with 12 and our medium size will start with 10. So once you have your 10 stitches, I like to just move my work out of the way so I can see these two loops. Take your loop, start to pull it in. Take that loop now, give that a tug. Take your tail, tug it, and it will make a nice secure ring. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the first double crochet to join. I'm going to chain two. We're not going to include that as a stitch. And now I'm going to work two double crochet in every stitch. Okay, so we're going to go from 10 to 20 stitches. Okay, so once you get all the way around, we're going to slip stitch to join. Chain two. And we're going to do another increase round. So I'm going to do one double crochet. And in the next stitch, I'm going to work two double crochet. So my repeat pattern will be one double crochet and then two double crochet. So this round, we will increase to 30 stitches. So increasing another 10. Okay, so I won't be doing any more of this style of increases. So next we're going to jump into our cluster rounds and how we're going to do this when we join this time, we're going to join between the chain and that first double crochet. So slip stitch 
in between. We're going to chain three, and now the chain three will count as a double crochet. And I'm going to work a double crochet in that same space. So two double crochets together. We're going to skip two doubles, and in the space between, we're going to work two doubles. Skip the next two, and in the space in between, we'll work two doubles together. Okay, and we're gonna do that all the way around. Okay, so as you come around, you should have two double crochet remaining. Just ignore the chain. You should have two doubles here, and then we're going to slip stitch over to that space. So we're going to slip stitch into the double, and then we're going to slip stitch into the space between our two DC together stitches. But I want to change color when I do this slip stitch. So let's put this down. I can actually trim this tail. And I'm going to go with the soft taupe for my next color. We'll keep it light for you as we're working through this first part. So we're going to go through to slip stitch. You're going to take your new color. You're going to pull it through the loop on your hook. Tighten everything. Grab the working yarn and chain three. Push the tails out of the way. We're going to work two double crochet in the space. So this will be our beginning cluster. A chain three and two double crochet is a beginning cluster. Now what you can do is cut the medium taupe yarn and we are just going to knot the tails to deal with them. If you prefer to weave them, you can, but this, I just do this as I go and quickly eliminate the tails, I do a triple knot. Okay, and now we're gonna go to the next space between the doubles, the two doubles, and work our cluster. Our cluster is three double crochet. Go to the next space between the two DCs and work three double crochet together to make a cluster. So this round increases as well. Okay, so we're just going around working a cluster in the spaces between the two DC clusters. Okay, so I'm coming around to my last space and you should have 15 clusters to be on track. Now we're going to slip stitch over. So I'm gonna go through the first double crochet the next double crochet. And I'm gonna to get to that space between the clusters. I'm going to cut my yarn, just enough that you can easily make a knot. And I'm gonna bring in the next color, and this is natural. If you're following the same color pattern, but you can use any colors and any combination, you could go just two colors, really, it's up to you. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this through again. I like to grab my tails, make everything tight, 
but once you get your chain going, it's gonna secure it, so chain three, then you can tighten things up again. I like to just push the tails out of the way and get my two double crochet for my beginning cluster. And then I like to knot these right away and just get it out of the way so I don't have to think about the tails. This is all to the inside of the pumpkin, so we don't need to worry that there's knots. So now we're going to work around cluster in the spaces between the clusters. So this part now is repetitive. We're just working those three double crochet clusters together. Keeping our stitch count at 15 clusters for this size. I'm just going to take a look at our other pumpkin. So if we count our three DC cluster rounds, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we want a total of seven rounds with our three DC clusters. Okay, so not counting this one, if we, if we count just the three DC cluster rounds, you want to have seven of them and just alternate alternating the colors. If you're doing different colors, you could even alternate colors in the start, but because we're not seeing any of those rounds, I didn't worry with changing the color for them. So I'm going to continue now. I'm going to work up my seven rounds. So I'm going to then go, I think I'm going to go green, brown, and then, so then I'm going to go to the brown. Then I'm going to come back and do the medium taupe, soft taupe, and natural. Okay, so I have worked up my seven rounds of my cluster, three double crochet cluster stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we're back to, we're just repeating the color pattern. We're back to the green. And I'm going to pull through on my slip stitch with the green yarn. And I'm going to chain three. Now this round, we're only going to do two double crochet in each space. Okay, so we're going to start out with the chain and a double and then in each space we'll work two doubles. Okay, so we're starting to decrease the pumpkin. Okay, so the next round we're going to come over to our space change color on the slip stitch chain three and we're going to do another round with our two double crochet cluster around these tails out of the way So just repeating the last round, two double crochet in every space between the two DCs. So I'm slip stitching across. At this point, you could decide to stay with this color and you'll have this look here 
uh, the last two rounds in the same color or if you want to change up you get more this sort of look and I'm going to change color again so we're going back to the soft taupe for this so I'm going to change this over I'm going to chain two to get it secure I'm going to cut the yarn and I'm going to knot it to get it out of the way because we're going to put the bag into the pumpkin next before we do any more decreasing so we want to make sure that we can fit the bag in So I already have this bag filled up. So now what I've done with the pattern is I've given you a rough estimate. If you have a weigh scale and you want to weigh your bag with your rice, I have a rough estimate of how much it should weigh with just regular long grain rice. I'm just going to double check the weight. So with just regular long grain rice, it's going to weigh about 515 grams approximately. Now, depending if your pumpkin has come out a little different sizing, you may need to tweak that number. But that is just a rough. Now, I like to put it in the bag before it goes in because I like to kind of push in the corners of the bag so we don't have that squared off. bag shoved in there reminds me sort of like a hacky sack putting everything in here and then you're going to mold it now what you want to make sure too is that you have you can kind of push your bag down inside the pumpkin so if it's seeming that you have too much rice just take some out because what you'll do is you'll tie your bag and then you'll want to make sure that it pushes down inside and you can just play around molding this into shape going to be the right amount of stuffing for this one. So once you're satisfied with your amount of stuffing and your shape, we're going to start decreasing now to bring the pumpkin together. So we're going to yarn over, we're going to go through the first double crochet stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go through the next stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three. So that's a double crochet decrease and we're going to do that all the way around. So yarn over, go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go through the next stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three. Okay, and we're gonna repeat this all the way around. Okay, so I'm coming to my last decrease across the last two stitches. We're going to slip stitch to join. Okay, and then we're going to fasten off with a tail. Pull 
pull that through. And now we can grab our cinnamon stick. Now I like, you can do this either way. If your cinnamon sticks are short or if you don't mind them sticking out more, you can do this step after. If you wanted to sort of push down into your pumpkin, you don't have to worry about making it any smaller. You can make sure that your hole will accommodate that cinnamon stick. So you're gonna take your yarn needle and you're going to weave through the front loops only around. So once you get all the way around, you're just going to pull and you're going to see it's going to come in really nice. So just put this as a marker for how much you want to pull it in. And then I like to go around some extra weaving. And then to secure it, you're going to go back in the opposite direction. Okay, and then you can just fasten this off. So now what we're going to do is get our glue gun. We're going to glue around the bottom, around a bit of the side, because then we're going to push this in. And the glue is gonna to help to hold the center. So it kind of indents a little bit, gives the, the pumpkin a little bit more shape. Okay. So then once you have your glue, your cinnamon stick glued in, I'm gonna grab some twine to okay, So next it. you just wanna cut a nice long piece of twine and then we can tie it to the pumpkin stem. You could even do two pieces together to thicken it up a little if you want. Put some ribbon, really embellish your pumpkin however you want. And here is our finished fall for you granny pumpkin. So much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Make sure to check the description box below this video for the pattern and all the links to the supplies. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome... Mm -hmm.